So, hello everyone, we will continue with the moisture vapor transmission. So, we are discussing the moisture vapor transmission uh, through uh, fabrics made of fibers uh, dif at different proportion of hydrophilic fiber. So, as we have discussed that with the increase in hydrophilic content, the moisture vapor transmission increases. This increase is mainly due to the absorption, desorption and also the diffusivity of the diffusion coefficient of the material is actually reduced that this we have discussed. Now, now we will discuss that effect of the shape factor. So, effect of shape factor on the relative moisture vapor permeability in earlier segment when we discussed the same uh, for same fabrics when we discussed the wicking characteristics uh, liquid moisture transmission characteristics the increase in shape factor increases the wicking wickability but in case of moisture vapor transmission it, the trend is just reverse here its uh, uh, moisture vapor transmission rate reduces with the increase in shape factor same as the that of the air permeability air permeability reduces with the increase in shape factor so the higher shape factor means the trilobal in that case the triangular and circular fiber so that is uh, that uh, circular fabric so this is the trilobal the circular fabric has got fabric made of circular fiber is a circular polyester fiber has got highest water vapor permeability. And if we see the air permeability and moisture vapor permeability, the there is a straight line relationship. This is actually there is a highly correlated and this is the moisture transmission. Here the moisture transmission is mainly through the diffusion here, okay. mainly through diffusion because the fiber which we are using it is a it is a polyester it is a shaped polyester because polyester filament here uh, the non fikian diffusion is not there only uh, the fikian diffusion takes place that is why it is directly related with the air permeability which is air permeability which uh, the moisture transmission takes place through the air pocket. The result indicates that the fabric with the circular filament has highest water vapor permeability and it reduces with the increase in shape factor. So, this is basically due to there is a good correlation this is basically due to the air drag that vapor pressure drag due to higher specific surface area of the fiber with higher shape factor. So, the good uh, good correlation has also been found between air permeability and relative water vapor permeability. So, that the in this for a polyester fiber fabric made of polyester fiber. So, if you want to know the trend of moisture vapor permeability we can test simply air permeability then we, we can get the idea, but for hydrophobic fiber we have other phenomena. So, that we have to be we have to understand this phenomenon. As the shape factor increases the specific surface area of fiber also increases furthermore, the drag resistance to air and water vapor flows through the fiber surface okay, decreases with the increase in the shape factor. Okay. So, the flow the flow will decrease. So, the drag as the drag increases which results lower air flow and water vapor permeability. So, that drag increases due to the increase in the surface presented by the fiber. Air permeability and water vapor permeability decreases with the decrease in fiber diameter because of the increase in specific surface area at lower fiber diameter the surface specific surface area increases that is why water vapor permeability decreases. The same 
strain is observed in case of air permeability also. This result can also be explained by higher specific surface area that we have seen, but this trend will be different would be different if we use the hydrophobic fiber. Now, we will discuss another aspect important aspect of moisture transmission through textile material is moisture evaporation and moisture condensation. These two phenomena are extremely important in clothing comfort understanding the clothing comfort. So, moisture vapor transmission if it moisture vapor gets transmitted moisture gets evaporated there will be associated evaporative heat transmission. And when moisture gets condensed within the structure within the fabric that means, it will change the conductivity thermal conductivity of the fabric. So, moisture evaporation and moisture condensation it actually directly affect the thermal conductivity of the textile material. So, understanding this two phenomena evaporation and condensation is extremely important. So, first we will discuss the moisture evaporation. So, moisture evaporation and condensation also have significant effect on moisture vapor transmission through porous material. So, evaporation and condensation they are important and they depend on temperature of atmosphere and moisture distribution in porous material. So, that the depending on the moisture the temperature and moisture distribution the evaporation and condensation takes place. The importance of evaporative heat in maintaining the thermal balance become more crucial when with the increase in surrounding temperature that is very important. So, evaporative heat that means, a latent heat when the moisture gets transmitted latent heat from our body it is important when the surrounding atmospheric temperature increases because the normal process of heat transmission that is conduction, convection and radiation reduces, because the temperature gradient is difference in temperature is reduced that we have already discussed. During the evaporation of liquid body perspiration that is our sweat the latent is taken away from the body thus body cools down. Also increase in surrounding atmospheric temperature close to screen. So, that as the body temperature cools down it increases because the it takes latent heat. So, surrounding temperature increases ok. In this case due to the low temperature difference between the human body and environment the heat transmission through radiation conduction and convection reduces. So, this is important. So, the initial initially there was temperature gradient our body temperature was higher than the atmospheric temperature, but as the evaporative heat evaporative heat is evaporation is taking place liquid evaporation is taking place evaporative heat is taken away from our body. So, our body the skin temperature is reduced, but as the heat is coming out from our body to the surrounding atmosphere. So, lower surrounding atmosphere has become increased the temperature is increased. So, effectively there is the temperature gradient has reduced. So, initially say, suppose our body temperature was uh, skin temperature was say 36 degree Celsius and after the latent heat is taken. So, it has become say 34 degree Celsius and surrounding temperature if it was a 28 degree Celsius it has become say uh, 32, 33. So, the temperature gradient has reduced. So, the proper heat transmission through radiation conduction convection has reduced. So, in that case the evaporative heat transmission is extremely important. So, 
when the negative temperature gradient is there that means, the at higher climatic temperature higher than our body temperature in that case as we have already discussed the only phenomena is that of cooling of our body is by evaporative heat exchange. So, latent heat of evaporation of water is very large that is 2300 kilo joule per kg it is a very high. that means, small quantity of evaporation which actually transmits the significant quantity of heat the percent uh, present of air also enhance this heat transmission because the evaporative evaporation evaporative moisture will get uh, removed and additional cooling will take place. So, so at wind condition it is cooling will take place. Now, coming to the, the next phenomena it is a condensation. So, condensation of moisture vapor is a direct result of fabric being saturated by liquid perspiration that means, in the vapor form when it is getting transmitted it may get condensed okay, and with the with some specific condition and it is generally occur within the fabric when the local vapor pressure increases to saturation vapor pressure at certain temperature. So, at certain temperature the if the local vapor pressure is increased that means, during transmission of moisture vapor it gets condensed. So, one parameter is that at certain temperature a particular temperature if the vapor pressure is high then condensation will take place and also at low atmospheric pressure. So, condensation generally occurs when the atmospheric pressure is low the relatively warmer. So, when the atmospheric pressure is low that means, the fabric will also be low the temperature of the fabric will also be low that relatively warmer moisture vapor when is it comes from the skin when it comes under in contact with the cooler fabric surface. In that case fabric will act as the cold wall. Okay. So, the condensation will take place. So, it the cooler fabric the, that means, at, at lower atmospheric temperature when moisture gets transmitted during transmission the it will strike a cold wall which is actually effectively fabric and the, the moisture will get condensed. It has been reported that below so, it is the below 10 degree Celsius temperature. So, the condensation can occur at atmospheric temperature below 10 degree. So, if that atmospheric temperature is um, say below 10 degree, the so condensation will start. In the case of waterproof fabric, this condensation phenomenon is severe because water um, the moisture cannot get transmitted and water if it forms the water droplet the moisture if it condensed then it is not it will not go it will not be escaped. So, that within the structure fabric structure moisture will start condensing okay. water vapor can diffuse from the skin to the fabric layer easily, but diffusion from fabric layer to the atmosphere is difficult because it is a waterproof condensation take place. Okay. So, so, the condensation basically takes place in three stages. Initially dry porous fibrous media material takes place in three stages. First stage what is there? The certain conditions are generated that is velocity, temperature, vapor concentration field are developed. This actually proper condensation the stages for condensation situations for condensation take place first. So, these are the field that is temperature field, vapor concentration field, velocity field are generated. In second stage the liquid content increases gradually, but still too low to move. So, gradually the liquid content will increase from vapor to liquid formation will in will initiate will get initiated because of the 
fast stage because temperature has its uh, uh, its low it has become low vapor pressure concentration is high velocity is also low so at high velocity the it will take away at higher moisture uh, temperature moisture concentration um, condensation will not take place lower atmospheric pressure lower or, or lower vapor concentration it will the condensation will not take place but for a particular situation condensation the condition has uh, been developed and then the liquid content will gradually increase and in third stage liquid content increases further so this is and third stage the liquid content increases further and goes beyond certain threshold level and then the pendulum like droplet will start okay like drops of condensed okay it start and begin to move from under the surface tension and gravity so gradually the condensed air will start moving from one place to another gradually to move through along the fiber surface now the condensation of moisture that is at a saturation level so if the vapor concentration in both surfaces of the fabric is at saturation level that means the fabric is placed in saturated air in that case what will happen the throughout the thickness the moisture concentration will be there same concentration will be there okay there will be condensation inside the structure but if in case of the uh, the condition where the atmospheric moisture is below saturation level at a specific atmospheric temperature if it is uh, below the saturation level the condensation occurs only over certain region within the fabric. So, that total thickness will not get condensed. So, that will be within a particular place the, that is a particular zone of condensation it is not evenly distributed that means that particular weight zone that is called weight zone that condensed zone is actually separated by two dry zone both the sides so the if we talk about the fabric thickness so if it is a thickness in a particular zone there will be wet zone but other zones will not be uh, wet it will be dry zone so in this case the condensation of moisture vapor occur in the fabric which forms a wet zone separated by two dry zones okay and that weight zone travels. So, it is not that whole structure whole thickness is getting condensed, but that particular weight zone it travels and proportion of the weight zone increases with the increase in the condensation of moisture. So, gradually this thickness of the weight zone increases if the we our condensation keep on increasing but if the condense that weight zone is if the increase the in, uh, moisture vapor pressure is increasing okay but if the moisture vapor pressure is not increases what happen it it travels the progress of condensation so if gradually if it is increasing now it is increase whether it will increase in uh, left side or right side that depends on the the temperature of which uh, a particular site. So, it has been observed the study report says the progress of condensation process of moisture vapor takes place mainly in the direction of the warmer side rather than the cooler side which is a very interesting. Typically ideally we think that the cooler side the condensation will take place, but condensation the at the weight zone the thickness of weight zone increases gradually, but that it travels towards the uh, towards the warmer zone. So, that is the study report. Now, 
we will start the evaluation methods of moisture vapor transmission. So, there are different methods of moisture vapor transmission measurement. So, we will discuss one by one. So, different standard methods are available. So, first method is evaporative dish method or control dish method which follows the British standard PS 7209 which is evaporative dish method. Similar to that another method is developed by ASTM, ASTM E9666 is upright cup method or gore cup method. Gore cup method or upright cup method this is actually it is a this evaporative dish method and this upright cup method these are approximately these are same methods. So, we will discuss similar. Next is inverted cup method and they and desiccant inverted cup method. So, these are the two methods inverted cup method and desiccant inverted cup method ASTM F2298 method. Desiccant inverted cup method ok, moisture vapor transmission cell where we can measure the moisture vapor transmission rate we will discuss and dynamic moisture permeability cell ok, ASTM F2298 again sweating guarded hot plate and also the permit test that we will discuss permit test is another method and we will also discuss one method development developed by our lab that is microclimate simulator. So, evaporative dish method it is basically percentage water vapor permeability index it permeability index in terms of percentage it measures cup method it is measured measures the quantity of moisture moisture vapor transmitted per unit area per day sweating guarded hot plate evaporative heat transmission it measures holographic visualization method ok. This we will uh, discuss first is that evaporative dish method. In this method known weight of water is kept in the disk. So, known weight of water is kept here okay, and it is kept in a standard atmospheric temperature. An open mouth is covered by fabric okay. after certain time the system reached the equilibrium. So, that means the water flow rate is actually at it at constant rate its water is flowing. So, when it reaches equilibrium the water vapor permeability is measured by successive weighing of the disc. So, this disc along with the sample we weight at different time interval and relative water vapor permeability is calculated by comparing the reference fabric sample. So, this method actually measures the relative water vapor permeability with the known sample. So, first we measure the known sample then our uh, test sample and compare with that ok. So, water vapor permeability is measured by the 24 to m where m is the mass of the moisture vapor lost. So, at initial and at certain time after time t after time t we measure the mass. So, what is the difference? We can measure the mass of the water vapor lost ok. T is the time between the two weight, A is the area of the disc the that is area of the fabric and water vapor permeability of fabric and reference fabric are the that is the reference fabric. And with the this ratio we can get the relative water vapor permeability ok. Next is the upright cup method the system is exactly same only it follows the ASTM principle earlier one it, it follows the BS standard. The same principle 
air the water is there the air lead and the fabric specimen is there and calculation is exactly same way it calculate here actually it is uh, we keep the constant water earlier we can keep any quantity of water that is here the constant quantity of 100 ml water is kept fabric is mounted on the cup okay and the it is a temperature and uh, humidity and air velocity is specified and it is going and the same way it measures so, g is the mass of moisture vapor is uh, transmitted a is the area So, this, this way we can measure the moisture vapor permeability by upright cup method. This is the cup, cup method and if we see it is a inverted cup method, it is just actually reversed where the hydrophobic PTFE membrane is used to seal the mouth of the cup to prevent the wetting of the specimen. So, here it is not simple the fabric, the first the fabric uh, the cup is there and then the mouth is sealed by the hydrophobic PTFE membrane. So, the idea of PTFE membrane is that it is a it is a porous micro pore is there, it is a waterproof but breathable. It does not allow the water in liquid form, but it allows the moisture in vapor form. Okay. So, then the specimen is placed over the, uh, the PTFE membrane and cup assembly is placed in invert condition. So, then it is inverted condition and, and assembly is when periodically throughout the day. So, it is a simple and this is mainly used for waterproof sample. This actually technique is used for waterproof material and here uh, if we you can we can uh, directly use uh, measure the for PTFE membrane also. PTFE membrane can be our sample okay, or any other waterproof sample. Desiccant inverted cup method, it is typically it is a similar to that uh, inverted cup method, but here it is a it is a it is a not that simple, but here it is a inverted cup, but principle is totally different. Here this is the fabric samples that yellow one is the fabric samples and it is a sandwiched in between two membrane, one is that PTFE membrane in the upper side and in bottom side another PTFE membrane, but we can we can eliminate we may not may or may not use this PTAP membrane in the upper surface. Now, what is what is happening here and here it is a it is a desiccant potassium acetate okay, in any desiccant material which actually absorbs the moisture immediately. Now, with this setup and uh, this is the water tank with this setup when we actually this uh, system total system is immersed inside the water tank, the water in vapor form will get transmitted through the fabric through this total alignment, but liquid will not get transmitted. As soon as the water is transmitted, this desiccant it is actually it absorbs, absorbs the moisture vapor. So, that this total system remains dry and the, but mass is increasing. So, we can take the weight and we can calculate the moisture vapor transmission. So, the similar to that of inverted cup method, but only difference is that in this method the cup used in this method is partially filled with desiccant such as potassium acetate, calcium chloride or anhydrous calcium sulphate or anhydrous magnesium chlorosulphate. So, this are uh, the MgClO2O4. So, these are the um, chemicals which are 
actually used as the desiccant material. Okay. The drying agent, these are the basically drying agent, the drying agent stays in direct contact with the fabric. So, we can uh, we may use uh, this upper PTFE or may not use. So, normally we do not use this upper PTFE. So, this drying agents are uh, these are directly contact with the fabric minimizing the path of the water vapor flow. So, as soon as the water vapor goes in other side, so it immediately takes away. So, that proper water vapor transmission takes place. The inverted cup is covered by the specimen and then the specimen is covered by another piece of waterproof and moisture vapor permeable membrane that is PTFE membrane. The inverted cup along with the specimen is immersed into the water bath filled with the distilled water with the help of the specimen holder. So, that way and the measuring cup initially is weighed by the by means of balance uh, okay, and they then inverted and inserted in the into the specimen holder. After certain time the measuring cup is removed and reweight again. So, the difference is in this way difference is calculated W 2 is the weight after test W 1 weight before test. So, this is the method. So, this way we can calculate the water vapor permeability. Another method is that moisture vapor transmission cell. This in this method it is a basically two cells are used. So, one is the upper cell another is the lower cell. Lower cell is actually filled partially filled with water. So, uh, there is a uh, lower cell it is a partially filled with water and then fabric specimen it is covered with the fabric specimen and upper cell is kept dry okay, initially at the start by uh, the drying agent dry nitrogen we one can uh, flow through that and it is kept dry it is almost 0 humidity at upper cell. So, the lower cell is partially filled with uh, water then the fabric specimen is uh, kept and then upper cell which is dry then it is kept at that time at that point. Only thing is that the moisture vapor that is relative humidity is calculated. The relative humidity is measured with the time relative humidity of the upper cell. Okay. The upper cell the moisture vapor transmission T is given by the, the change in relative humidity of upper cell. So, that, that if we know the change in relative humidity in the upper cell by using this formula we can calculate the moisture vapor transmission okay. and this all this data we can get from the standard stable and another method is the dynamic moisture permeable cell which is capable of evaluating the moisture transmission uh, properties of textile under various conditions pure diffusion, combined diffusion and convection and pure convection. So, if we want to uh, know the moisture diffusion at different moisture transmission at different mode that in that case we can use a dynamic moisture permeable cell. Okay. Next is that the as we have discussed our uh, we have developed one instrument which is a microclimate simulator come moisture transmission tester. So, microclimate simulator means that we want to create the microclimate. Okay. This is the instrument the schematic diagram of the instrument here the water tank is there which is that is thermostat control we can control the temperature it is connected with the heater we can control the temperature of the water in such a way so that the skin temperature the when it is coming out of the 
skin that this one the yellow one is that it is called it is a mimic skin we have used some material which actually represent the skin. So, the temperature of water is maintained in such a fashion the so that the, the moisture vapor the uh, temperature of the skin is at the th at 37 degree Celsius that is how we can maintain this temperature. So, as the moisture it is it is a getting it is uh, water is getting heated the moisture will get transmitted through the this skin mimic skin and what we have created here the gap the blue one dark blue one this one is the fabric specimen. So, here we can change the at uh, distance this is actually this is the skin and the fabric this actually shows the microclimate. So, what we are interested in here at this point what is the temperature and the what is the humidity of this microclimate because the temperature and humidity of the microclimate which actually affect the comfort sensation and this is the fabric and depending on the fabric type depending on the transmission characteristics of the fabric the microclimate temperature and humidity changes and also here the air blow system is there if we want to measure the uh, at a uh, at different air flow rate what is the microclimate condition at say wind at a blowing wind condition that also we can measure. So, this instrument gives idea about the comfort sensation this is the condition here fabric sample okay. and humidity sensor is kept here mass controller is there this is the actual instrument okay. this is the air channel and inside the water tank and uh, microclimate portion is there and here also we can change the thickness of microclimate depending on our requirement depending on the we can change the thickness of this this can be shifted. Now, if we see here this picture shows that humidity versus the time at different time how the humidity changes and the blue line shows the microclimate and the uh, red line shows the the atmosphere surrounding air ok. So, humidity of the surrounding air if you see so here in this instrument we have kept the sensor here also at the so, humidity sensor and temperature sensor at the this is this is showing the atmospheric air this is adjacent air and microclimate also we can we are measuring. So, if we see the humidity so humidity of the adjacent air so atmospheric air surrounding air it is almost constant, but gradually the humidity in the microclimate increases. So, that is due to the presence of fabric and uh, type of moisture vapor transmission the humidity of the microclimate increases gradually. So, it is increasing the skin temperature steady increase till here and gradually it is also increasing. So, at initially the humidity is increasing at the faster rate, but after that rate is becoming slower because it is getting saturated. Okay. So, it is close to 80, 85, 80 percent, 75 percent. After that after certain time the fan is switched on just to simulate that air is has started blowing which actually enhance the, the convective moisture transmission convective mass transmission is there and as the air is blowing so, it takes away the humidity from the microclimate that is a forced convection is taking place. So, our humidity in the microclimate drops. So, that is it shows and what we have observed this is a typical curve, but our experiment shows the at different fabric level at different fabric the nature of drop humidity is different. So, from there we can select the type of fabric okay. and also 
it depends on the thickness of microclimate at different thickness the drop in humidity of microclimate will be different. So, this all this uh, detailed study has been already reported, but this instrument gives the idea about the increase in humidity in the microclimate and drop in humidity when the fan is changed. So, we can track the total humidity and also the temperature. The temperature of uh, microclimate we have seen it increases gradually because it is a it is a vapor pressure increases. So, temperature of microclimate increases gradually the hot humidity is increases. So, it is from 25 degrees Celsius initially at the microclimate it is going gradually it is increasing. So, it can go further up, but as we have switched on the fan it drops. So, it is it is dropping because of the forced convection of heat forced convection is taking place. So, this instrument measures both heat and mass transmission characteristics. The another technique is holographic bench technique which is uh, by micro weighing of the moisture level. In this method the mass flow is measured with the high accuracy using a micro weighing technique okay? holographic bench technique. The resistance to the water vapor transmission depends on the resistance of air layer and outer air layer and the outer clothing. So, that is uh, the outer clothing the resistance and resistance to air layer. So, in this technique we can we measure the resistance to air layer. So, holographic bench technique separately measures the water vapor flow resistance offered by the air layer. So, at uh, if we measure the, the resistance offered by the air layer, then we can actually know the what is the resistance offered by the fabric layer. So, it separates out, out the moisture vapor resistance by the air layer. So, that uh, that is uh, how we can measure the, um, we, the we can use this holographic bench technique okay. thus provides the precise vapor resistance value of the textile layer. So, we will stop here, we will continue with the measurement technique and the next talk we will start with the sweating guarded hot plate. Thank you. Thank you.